Thanks for watching this screencast. Our objective here is learners will be able to describe transformations of the reciprocal function. Okay, so this is the reciprocal function right here. Uh, f of x equals 1 over x. And the reason we call it the reciprocal function is that the output will simply be the reciprocal of whatever the input is. If you plug in 3, the output is 1 over 3. If you plug in negative 6, the output is negative 1 sixth. If you plug in a half, 1 over a half is 2, the output would be 2. Just like with the other functions we've studied this year in Algebra 2, there are some important points for you to understand that are on the graph. 1, 1 is there, because 1 over 1 is also 1. But if you plug in 2, you'd get like 1 half, you'd get 1 over 2. If you plug in a half, you would get 2 as the output. And the same is true if you change the signs of the inputs. Here, we've got the point negative 1, negative 1. 1 over negative 1 is also negative 1. This is the point negative 1 and a half, comma, negative 2. And this point right here is negative 2 negative one half. And essentially the shape of the graph creates what we actually call a hyperbola. Uh, that hyperbola uh, has some end behavior um, for big negative x's and big positive x's. So the domain of the reciprocal function, if you think about what x values are in the graph, I can see that all of the negative x's have points on the graph even even the even the very very close to zero negative x's as this behavior continues here will just become huge negative y values and i see that all of the positive x's are in there as well the big positive x's have really tiny positive y's the really really close to zero positive x's have huge positive y's there's only one value that doesn't work it's zero and I can look at the rule and see why 0 doesn't work either. If I tried plugging 0 in for x, 1 over 0 is undefined. The domain is everything but 0. In an interval notation, that's negative infinity to 0 in union with 0 to infinity. The range, I see all of the negative y's. I see all of the positive y's. There's only one y value that's not in the range, and it's also 0. So the range is also everything but 0. Another way to think about that is there's nothing you could place for x that would make the output equal 0 either. So now we need to talk about these two lines here, this green line and this kind of purple line, that aren't part of the graph either, but they support the graph. They support the shape of the graph. And those are known as asymptotes. An asymptote is a structural line that supports the shape of a graph, but isn't actually part of the graph. And the rational function, the uh, reciprocal function rather, has a horizontal asymptote, this dotted line here in green. It's not part of the graph, but it helps support it. It shows what happens to the y's as the x's get huge, the y's get closer and closer to, but never touch that line. The same is true for the big negative x's that have tiny, tiny negative y's that get closer and closer to but never touch that line. This line has an equation. It's a horizontal line. It's the line y equals 0. And the vertical asymptote that does the same thing, supports the shape of the graph, is at x equals 0. So our goal is to be able to sketch some reciprocal functions. Let's see if we can sketch uh, f of x equals 1 over x plus 2. And what I really want to do is I want to think about what that plus 2 does using the language of transformations. Think about what it means to add 2 to the x of a function. That is a shift that shifts everything about the function, not right to, but left to. So if I think about that horizontal asymptote that was at y equals 0, if I think about shifting that whole line left to, 
Well, that would still be at y equals 0, wouldn't it? So my horizontal asymptote should still be y equals 0. We tend to sketch those with dotted lines because they're not part of the graph. They're just structural. Now what would change if I shift everything left to is the vertical asymptote that was along the y-axis. It would now be over here at uh, x equals negative 2. And lastly, what I want to think about is shifting all of those key basic points uh, of the reciprocal function left to. There was a point at 1, 1. It would go here to negative 1, 1. There was a point at 2, comma, a half. It would go to 0, comma, 1 half. There was a point at 1, half, comma, 2. It would go over here to negative 1, and a half, comma, 2. And I can use the asymptotes and those three key points to get an idea of what a sketch of that graph would look like. Just like when you were graphing the exponential and log functions, try not to make it go straight horizontal, although that's hard to do when you're sketching it, and try to keep it off of the asymptotes. Same thing for the three key points down here in what we called quadrant three. If I take the point at negative one, negative one, and go left two, I'm here. If I take the point that was at negative two, negative one half, and go left two, I'm at negative four, negative one half. If I take the point that was at negative 1 half, negative 2, and go left 2, I'm at negative 2 and a half, negative 2. And now I can use the asymptotes. Didn't draw that one great, but you get the idea. For making your sketches, get the key points on there as best you can, get the general shape, and we're good. Well, here's another example. Here's f of x is 1 over x minus 3 plus 2. I've got two things to account for here. One is the negative 3. So the subtracting 3 from x shifts the whole thing, not left, but right 3. And then the plus 2. This is me adding 2 to the function itself. So here I want to think about going up 2. That's right. So let's think about moving all of the pieces of the graph in that way. If I think about the horizontal asymptote, y equals 0. Right 3 wouldn't change that any, but up 2 sure would. That should be up here now at y equals 2. And shifting the whole graph right 3 would change the vertical asymptote from x equals 0 to x equals 3. And now let's think about moving those key points. If I move 1, 1, right 3 and up 2, right 3 and up 2 is right here. Move 2, comma, a half, right 3 and up 2. Move 1, half, comma, 2, right 3 and up 2. Part of the graph looks something like that. If I take negative 1, 1, negative 1 and go right 3 and up 2, we're here. If I take negative 2, negative 1 half, right 3, and up 2. And if I take negative 1 half, negative 2, right 3, and up 2. It's going to be really hard to draw. That kind of general decreasing form. But there it is. There's a reasonable sketch of the graph. All right, this one's for you to try. Go ahead and pause the video, see if you can make a reasonable sketch. And when you think you got it worked out, hit play to give yourself some feedback. You know, to graph one over x plus one minus four, I wanna think about shifting the whole graph left one unit. And then this, since it's happening to the function itself, down four. So, the horizontal asymptote along the x-axis, shifting everything left 1 wouldn't change it, but shifting it down 4 would bring it right down here. The vertical asymptote, 
left one would move the thing over here to x is negative one. And now I can think about moving the key points that way as well. So if I move the point at 1, 1, left 1, and down 4, I'm really here at 0, negative 3. If I think about moving 2, comma, a half, left 1, and down 4, I'm here. Think about moving 1, half, comma, 2, left 1, and down 4, I'm here. And I think half of the graph, well, looks something like that at least. If I think about negative 1, negative 1, left 1 and down 4, I need here. Negative 2, comma, negative 1 half, left 1 and down 4 puts me here. And negative 1 half, negative 2, I go left 1 and down 4 puts me right here. And on the way we were given this graph, I don't have a lot to show, but there's a decent sketch for how she's going to look. Thanks for watching.